Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about the anatomy of large format lenses. I have here four, four large format lenses. You'll notice that three of them look fundamentally the same, which is to say they have a shutter mounted on this board and that one of them here is somewhat different. This is a barrel lens, the most simple type of lens out there and uh, the most simple type of large format lens. This particular one is a Dalmeyer 8 inch F29 Pentac and was a World War II lens used for uh, aerial photography. A barrel lens is literally just lens elements inside a metal barrel with an aperture. And I'll stop this down here. See if you can take a look at that just a little bit. I have a lot of glare in the studio today. For those of you who don't want to take the time to count those aperture leaves, there are 20 of them. I'm going to leave this guy out of the discussion because it's different than most large format camera lenses. Only large format cameras with built-in shutters like um, Graflex Super D's or Anniversary Graphics, Speed Graphics, uh, same thing, can use these. Or if you have what's called a, a um, a roller blind shutter that fixes over the back or so the front of these typically. You can use one of these on your camera or if you were to get something like a compound number five, which is almost big enough to screw onto the front of this, you could use a barrel lens with something like that. A lens like this really is only gonna be usable with something like a speed graphic or a Super D. These other three lenses are all variations on a theme. They go from very tiny to significantly larger. This is a 90 millimeter, this is a 75, so there's no correlation between focal length and size. We're gonna take a look at this 210 millimeter Kaltar as our standard lens example. This is a Schneider lens branded Kaltar. It's mounted in a board. This is an anniversary graphic four inch by four inch board right here. It has lens cells. Oops, that's not how that's supposed to go. There is a rear lens cell right here, and there's a front lens cell, come on, right here. The lens cells are removable so that they can be mounted in different shutters. Different lenses are de designed for different shutter sizes. This is in a Copal number one, for instance, and um, that's what that lens was designed for. The Copal shutters, I think I can actually, since I loosened this, can take it off. Here we go. And this is the same way whether you're using a Seiko, a Compound, a Comper, or any other type of shutter. Attaches to the lens board with the use of this retaining ring right here that just screws into the back of the shutter. The aperture is built into the shutter. It's not built into the lens. So let me open up the shutter leaves here and you might be able to see that aperture opening and closing. Oops. And since multiple different types of lenses could fit into a Copal number one, the aperture scale, which is up here on the top, goes from 5.6 out to 45. You can actually stop down beyond 45 with this lens. If you were to have a different lens in here, the scale would have to be changed out for that lens's maximum aperture. For instance, there's a 210.56 could fit in here. But if you had a 300 millimeter lens in here with the same opening, it might only be something like an F7, give or take. Or if you had a, a 90 millimeter, it might be like an F4. So these scales get changed out depending on what type of lens you have. So here we have the aperture adjustment and the lens scales. On the bottom of the lens, we have another set of lens scales and an aperture indicator so that as you adjust the aperture, you can see what you're set at. This is so that if you have the camera above your head, you can see what aperture you're using. This little doodad here on the side is the preview lever and it opens up the leaves so that you can preview the scene and get a good focus before you take your picture. This is your flash sync. This is marked X, indicating that it uses an X, a Xenon, a modern flash bulb. And because this is a leaf shutter, and every time you take a picture, the leaves open and then close, 
the flash sync on a leaf shutter is any speed that the leaf shutter can attain. This is the dial right here that allows you to select your shutter speeds anywhere from time. Time meaning that when you activate the shutter, it opens, and when you activate it again, it closes. Bulb, which means for as long as you hold down the trigger, it will stay open. And then the shutter speeds from one second up to one four hundredth. Four hundredth to a five hundredth is the typical fastest shutter speed for lenses. The lens shutters like this. The larger the shutter, the slower the maximum speed tends to be because the more energy is required to open and close the leaves and the more distance they have to travel, so the speed decreases. There are some leaf shutters that go up to a thousandth of a second, but they're few and far between and they aren't going to be any of the standard ones. Some of the old graph flexes went up to a thousandth. Then there are some other parts here. This is your uh, trigger. So this is what you push when you want to take a picture. There's a little screw thread right here which allows you to screw in a cable release. So if you wanted to use a cable release on your lens, which is always a good idea with large format lenses, you can do that. This is the little doodad that arms your shutter. There we go, so you can trigger it. So the way that you're going to use something like this is when you're out in the field, you will put the lens on the front of your camera and you'll look at the ground glass on the back of it. Then you'll pop open this little switch right here. If you have a Copal one like this and you don't have one of these focusing switches, because sometimes these break, one of my Seiko shutters, the whole mechanism for the preview doesn't work. What you would do is put it in time and then use time mode to focus or if you don't have time, you would use bulb mode and then use a cable release with a lock to hold this open while you focus. So this preview lever is a very nice luxury and I really appreciate it when the lenses have it, but it's not mandatory for use of a lens. So anyway, you'll have your lens wide open, you'll get your focus in by adjusting the camera's standards either forward and back, and then adjust your lift, your rise, things like that. We'll have videos on how to do all that in the future. Then you're going to adjust your settings however you want them. And with most lenses, not all, there are variations within them. You can adjust the settings while your lens is open. I tend not to because, for instance, my Seiko lenses, lens shutters don't necessarily like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but they, they tend to not really adjust as easily. So I'll get my focus and then I'll close this and then I'll figure out what my settings are going to be and get everything adjusted. So if I know that I'm at 1 125th and f16 for my shutter time and aperture, I'll get those set. I'll arm the shutter and then I'll stand off beside and a little bit behind the camera and then just take the picture. Probably couldn't even see that move with the way that shutter um, camera lenses work. We'll do a slightly slower one so you can take a look. We'll do a half second. There we go. And that's it. That's how these work. Most shutters will have an indicator of their size. And the size is important because this ring back here that fits through the lens board is going to be a different size depending on the different shutters. Copals go from double zero, that's the smallest I'm aware of, and I used to have one of those, they are incredibly tiny, up to, I think a number three is the largest that's reasonably available. Ilex, Acme, and Compound went up to number five, but in general, the, the larger the number, the larger the shutter is going to be. At any rate, that number is important because when you order a lens board for your camera, you need to know it to be able to order uh, the right size lens board. If you have a shutter that doesn't have that number printed on it, which some of them don't, you can measure this with a caliper and um, order a lens board based on the size of opening that you would need. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at how to mount a leaf shutter to a lens board, the equipment you're gonna need, and the process that you're going to follow. 
So if this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track and that I'm producing content which is helpful to you. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'm more than happy to answer those and I'm pretty good about responding to comments fairly quickly. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, again, please leave those below. If you'd like to subscribe, please do and I'll, you'll find out if you turn on the notifications bell when I have more videos about photography. And if you've been watching, you'll notice that we're going to be doing a lot more large format photography videos on the channel this year. And one last and very important thing, thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next video.